with me and say with me now, Father God in heaven, let your word be in my mind. Let your word be in my mind. Let your word be in my heart. Let your word be in my heart. Let your word be on my lips. Let your word be on my lips. Most importantly, let your grace show in my life. Let your grace show in my life. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 34, and we'll read it from verse 11 to 16 and 20 to 24. Ezekiel says in verse 11, For thus says the Lord God, Indeed I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day, he is among his scattered sheep. So will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. So we're talking about the world. This is prophecy. This is looking ahead. This is looking ahead to Christ, who would become our great shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. I shall not want. He is our Lord. And it says, as a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day, he is among the scattered sheep. Did you get that? Did you pick that up? That he is among the scattered sheep. That God came to mankind. We're coming up to the Christian, the, the Christmas period when we remember Christ's birth, that God became man, became the God-man, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Regardless of who that offends, I'm sorry, but I cannot state anything else other than He is the only Son of God. And therefore He became Emmanuel, God with us. God descended from the heavens and became man to be among us. Wow! What an amazing statement of prophecy right back in Ezekiel's time. Prophesying that Jesus was going to come. Amazing. And my sheep, he was seek out his sheep. And that's what he did. The good news, the gospel, the the gospel of peace, reconciling man to God. You know, Jesus' mission was to reconcile man to God. It was a peace mission. Man could not reconcile himself back to God. Impossible. We could not keep the law. But Jesus can reconcile us back to God. Jesus and his shed blood covers our sins and that reconciles us with the Father. And he says... So will I seek out my sheep, my sheep, do you get that? My sheep, and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. In John 17, it talks about the Father giving us into the hands of Christ. That we are given to him. The Father has given the believers to Jesus to be head over us as church, as his people. And it says he's going to deliver them all from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. In other words, the world is in darkness. There's many things going on in the world that we are into. Many of us were into dark things. Many of us were, were actually under a cloud. We were oppressed. But then sometimes we were also oppressive because we were under a, a dark cloud. We are under a cloudy darkness. We were fallen creatures. We were no longer enlightened. We did not understand spiritual things. We were living in the flesh and under the control of Satan and the influence of the world. And he came and he chose us and he, he, he seeked us out. He sought after us. He came and found us. We didn't find him. We think we did. But no. He found us. Jesus found you. Now, how does that make you feel when you know that Jesus has found you? Isn't that amazing? That's really weird. I can't even see myself on the video. Okay, so maybe I can do something with the first two. So, get back to where we were. So, where were we? cloudy and dark day. So where were you on that cloudy and dark day? <coughs> Think about that for a moment. You know, when we come to do our testimony, for example, we testify to what our life was like before we met Christ, how we met Christ, 
and what our life has become like after we've met Christ. Now, if there's no change before we met Christ, and how our life is after we've met with Christ, then we need to go back to the drawing board and say, hmm, something's not adding up. Life and limb are not, lip and life are not adding up, you know. What we, what we say and what we do it is, is different. So we need to go back to that and see, what is God saying to you in that situation? Because he's come to seek you out. Did he really seek you out? Did you really get failed by Christ? Or did you just get involved with the church? Did you just begin to think, oh, I'll try and be a better person? Did you just start to think, well, you know, it makes sense, and this is a policy that keeps me from hell, I'll go for that. Sometimes it's just a mental ascent. You just read scriptures and think, okay, I'll just follow that. Seems like a good idea, seems okay. But that's not salvation. If nothing's changed, if your heart's not changed, you haven't been touched by God yet. The Holy Spirit's work is to open your eyes and recognize Jesus. That's his work. It's God's job to judge. It's Jesus' job to, to show you how much he loved you. you know, it's the Holy Spirit's work to reveal Jesus to you so you understand who he is, that he truly is God, the Son of God, incarnate, someone who came to be with us. Verse 13 says, And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them to their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys and in the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in good pasture, and their fold shall be on the high mountains of Israel. There they shall lie down in a good fold, and feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek what was lost, and bring back what was driven away. Bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick, but I will destroy the fat and the strong and feed them in judgment. So this is another prophetic element to God's word in Ezekiel to say that Israel, that the Jewish nation will be brought back and that they would be on the mountains of Israel in the land that God set them, in the land that God gave to them. And nothing is going to uphold, nothing is going to, destroy that only God can change these things and obviously there's been times when the people of God have been scattered but he's going to seek them out as he did and he brought more back to Israel as it is now they've been scattered right around the world and God brought them back he brought his sheep back these were the sheep of his fold but then there's also the sense in which we become the sheep of his fold as Christian believers and then in verse 20, Therefore thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I myself will judge between the fat and the lean sheep, because you have pushed with side and shoulder, butted all the weak ones with your horns, and scattered them abroad. So there are people in his nation, in the nation, the Jewish nation, there are people that have been quite bad towards some of their people. They're not all good sheep. They're not all working in the way that God wanted them to. So even though as a nation they are blessed, there's still as aspects of people in that nation that are going against God, that are disappearing and hurting other people and pushing them away and scattering them. He says in verse 22, Therefore I will save my flock and they shall no longer be a prey and I will judge between sheep and sheep. So even though this is his flock, these are his sheep. The Israelite people are his sheep. He's going to judge between the sheep in that fold. Verse 23, I will establish one shepherd over them. Ooh, I wonder who that could be. I will establish one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Now he then says, my servant David. So it's going to be of the line of David, but there's going to be one shepherd over them. And he shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken. So he's saying, this is the royal line from now on. David's line. This is where it's going to happen. David starts off being the first shepherd and being a warrior king and being over them. 
and obviously that is the line that Christ is going to come through. Verse 25, I will make a covenant of peace with them and cause wild beasts to cease from the land and they will dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. I will make them and the, and the places all around my hill a blessing and I will cause showers to come down in their seasons. There shall be showers of blessings. Wow, amazing. So this is what we're looking for. This is what God's going to do. So we're looking forward to the future now. He's, Ezekiel is talking quite often, you know, in prophetic things. We have what's going on now, what's going to happen in a year's time, what's going to happen in five years, maybe what's going to happen in hundreds of years' time. So that aspect of prophecy is like looking through rings of, of what's going to happen behind one another. And we, it's difficult to kind of assess where they are in time. But God reveals them over time. And that's how we know that prophet, prophets were real prophets. People like Ezekiel. Amen? Amen. Amen.